So let's just get right into it. Let's, do let's it. talk about Equestria Girls. <laughs> Didn't you read the comic book? <laughs> um, I'm not it? drunk enough. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren says, I said that there was a group hug. And Lauren said, ponies look creepy when they hug. Oh. <laughs> 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 ponies look creepy when they hug. Maybe just aggressive nuzzling. <laughs> Human arms. I was like a Nazi about that for yes, a while. I lost. That would be cute. There were a lot of notes that were like, this is not anatomically possible. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the most, more disturbing backstory? Applejack and her parents, or Scooby Doo and her parents? Oh. I did want Applejack's parents to have been deceased. I, I knew that they would never let me say that because uh, it's too sad, so I just kind of skirted the issue. I just went, they're a family, and it's three kids and a grandmother, and what happened to the parents, you know? <laughs> Should have been in there. Thank you. Also, too. Graphic death scene. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were eaten by timber wolves. Oh. 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 Oh, they, they were. <laughs> What happened to them? I wouldn't have an answer for you. I, I hadn't thought about that far. I was at school. And I was parents important. murdered Applejack. <laughs> because you're like, this is the way to do it. I believe in it, you know? And, and that was like something I had when I was younger and I don't have as much anymore. Uh, so I'm just just trying to get it back. You gotta take that, drink that's after it. you say that. What's that? Take a drink after you say that. Ellie. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> used to it. Oh, no, I mean, it's true. <laughs> um, I guess that's part of being, you know, a jaded person in their 40s. <laughs> um, <laughs> So this is from Return of Harmony. Um, it's interesting, in the, in the uh, outline, you were very concerned that it was reading too serious. So a lot of your notes were, find the humor, find the humor, find the humor. Uh, and this is one case. Uh-oh. <laughs> we need to, she's talking about Hasbro. We need to let them know what will be funny and cartoony about all our characters turning into bitches. <laughs> that they meet a sea pony on the beach, you know, and she's saying, our, our kingdom is in trouble, come help us and save us. And, um, you know, because I was working in lots of classic mythology, I, I think I was thinking about using the Kraken in that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny, because now I've, I've got uh, using the Kraken now. So. Right. right. It never goes away. <laughs> yes, it's always the Kraken. <laughs> But I was so intimidated him. by you. Me? Yes. <laughs> I remember where you were sitting around that end of the table and I was just like, like hanging on your every word. I think I remember to do that and write it down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. Wow. That was when you played, I'm going to interview you while I do this. You played the uh, pilot. Oh, That's pilot. good. <laughs> And I remember thinking, this is like melted Skittles on the screen, and I just want to lick the screen. It's <laughs> and then you played Winter Wrap-Up, the song Winter Wrap-Up, and I was just like, 
this is this is legit. This is a really good show. <laughs> <laughs> it took a while for people to realize that. <laughs> and uh, I had to fight for Kathy for Spike. Really? I did. I did. I had to mm. fight. They, uh, somebody at the hub really liked someone. I don't remember who did an audition for Spike and. I'm just doing the Gurgi voice. <laughs> what the? Uh, that everybody's oh, heard no 10,000 times and it's incredibly annoying. <laughs> <laughs> they, they really liked that. And yeah. I was like, oh my god, no! <laughs> so I could get Kathy or Spike. I was blown away that um, I was asked to write on the show more than once because <laughs> she kept giving me episodes and had references, like the first one, Storm of the Century, that was the Tribbles. And I would go to the story meeting and be like, sorry, I've never seen Star Trek. I, don't know. <laughs> I know that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> and then she brought me back. So then it's Return of Harmony time, and she's like, oh, he's, he's gonna be like cute. Star Trek administration, like what? <laughs> I had no idea who that was, so then I had to go watch a bunch of uh, Next Generations. <laughs> and there was the Music Man episode you gave me, and I'd never seen that. So, it was like every story meeting, she's like, you know, like this. And it's like, what? <laughs> Do you remember your reference to me for Luna in the Luna Clips? before she became... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I can't remember the name of the character. Uh, April in, in April. Fox and Red. Yeah, April yeah. Fox and Red. That, was, that the, was the original concept. That was the first draft of the script was April. Yeah. And Nick, again, I'd never seen Fox and Red. Yeah. <laughs> Someone at the Hub didn't believe I could think that funny, so... Oh, those no I, I read those notes this morning. They were harsh. Yeah, they were harsh. <laughs> they were not nice. They were me. It was such a weird episode because of Pipsqueak. I don't know why. Hasbro asked for a boy. Oh, really? They asked for a boy. They asked for a new boy character. I really don't know why because for all of season one, I kept Trixie. Like, Trixie was a boy. Really? Trixie was a boy. Oh, I what? Wow. And uh, they said, no, no boys. Uh, which is not a thing I hear very often. Rob gave me a note on Rarity, and all it said was, can she swing a pickaxe, Lauren? <laughs> <laughs> and I just love it, I think it was dead serious. He really was like, Lauren, Rarity wheel a pickaxe. What was my answer? Do you have it? You didn't answer. I didn't answer. No, yeah. but the pickaxe must have gotten removed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> By the way, you remember Angel's original name? I don't. Mortimer. Oh, that's right. <laughs> He started as a mouse. In, in, in Ticketmaster, he was more than with a mouse because I thought it was funny that this tiny little thing was bossing Fluttershy around. Uh, I don't know why we changed it to a rabbit. I know we, we had to, we couldn't keep the name Mortimer because I think that was a Disney thing. Mortimer oh, really? somewhere, yeah. It was a legal thing, yeah. Uh, back in Cantalat, it's the summer sun celebration. Celestia's going to raise the sun. I didn't know what that looked like. So, I, I wrote it and it was this big dramatic, she was straining this whole thing. And you wrote a note saying, I don't think it'd be like that, she does this every day. This is more a ceremonial thing. And your note was, you could make it really girly and Sailor Moon-like. It <laughs> within her, makes her long rainbow hair whip around her and crap. <laughs> Swarm of the century that was definitely uh, really yeah. comfortable with each other. <laughs> I think I was uh, putting less thought into what I was saying, too. <laughs> that was a good note. I knew exactly what you meant. <laughs> it's just a really nice way to create episodes. Thank you. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of me praising how she runs things. So I don't mind. <laughs> She's really good at it. I need to hear. It's important. <laughs> I think that, you know, I think I wanted to do Cutie Mark Chronicles. Really? <laughs> I understand that.
<laughs> but I got to. Yeah. <laughs> and you had a creature in there called a bee bork. There's a beaver ogre. In the world. Oh, I remember. <laughs> the greatest name of Oh Beavor. my god, I don't know. This really grossed me trouble, I guess. You call them the pig headed beavorks. No, I don't think I remember that. I think I remember that now. Yeah, that got, that, that got rejected. <laughs> I'm only a freelance writer on the show, and I find it hard like, to get as excited about my own book as I am about the show, because it was such a fun experience, and I get to connect with these people, but... Uh, the way Amy Keating Rogers wrote Pinkie Pie's dialogue. That, that was a huge one for me, because I, 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 I think she, that, that defined her. So, go Amy! <laughs> so I was like, well, well where, where can I have my story meetings? And I said, can you do them in your house? Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and um, I was like, um, no. <laughs> no. And I, at the beginning of the production, I actually did. We had a handful of straight yeah. in my house. We had a writer's summit in your house. Yeah, we had a writer's summit. Yeah, my dog's first. <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> the real reason I didn't want to have a story meeting, story meetings in my house is because I didn't have time to clean my house before <laughs> 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 to have story meetings because I was working so hard and this was dirty all the time. Um, I remember that when we had the summit, Craig was there and I think he was cleaning out the garage or something. There was a bunch of PowerPoint stuff in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cartoon Network would call us periodically and go, we have all this merchandise that we want you to have. And he's like, what? And you know, they bring over like 15,000 boxes oh that we'd have wow. to sort through. Of like Powerpuff and Foster's merchandise, so it was probably yeah. There was all this domestic stuff happening, trying to like yeah. come up with story ideas. And they finally gave us like a very small windowless storage room <laughs> behind the Pound Puppies area that had boxes and a really old table. Really old table, really chairs stacked. Against chairs the wall. stacked against the wall, and, and I was like, well, that's it's better than nothing. It was fine. Um, but we were taping our index cards to the wall, so I asked for a bulletin board, and like six weeks later, I get a bulletin board. Oh my God. This big. <laughs> And it was actually kind of hilarious at the time because I was just losing my mind. This was so far down into season one, and, and everything was just so hard then that I I taped the cards where they need to be taped, and we pin the cards on the little bulletin board, you know, the, the nine cards that fit on that, and I took a bunch of pictures of it. Because um, I found that really funny. You uh, deserve that. And we had to go through the Pound Puppies area, which was empty, there was never anybody there. No. Plenty of room, plenty of space, desks, no. little rooms. Pound Puppies art and no people ever. We went yeah. through that to get to the school closet. Yeah, I just couldn't believe it took them six weeks to give me a bulletin board that day. Like, it's like somebody went to Target to the, like, the kids decor room and bought a little bulletin board. And so, but unfortunately, that was a final straw moment for me. Really? It was, it was, it was getting towards the final straw. It was right. like one of the final ten straws was that one. Because I was just like, they don't even know what we're doing. <laughs> They don't understand what we're doing. Well, okay, so again, thank you very much for everything that thank you did. Thank you, this was fun. This was very fun. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.